Hey, what's up guys? It's Amory. So I'm reading this book, Cinder by Marissa Meyer. It's taken me so long to get to this book. You guys have seen it on my shelves. I have all three books because they're so beautiful and gorgeous and I heard so many great things about them. I wanted to get to it. Actually, Maureen was telling me this is the one that I should read. So thanks Maureen, I've jumped in and I'm really enjoying it. I'm actually about halfway through page 145 and I'm really liking it. This is not a review. Sometimes I'm reading things and I want to share with you guys what I think about it, how my read is going, and I may not have all my thoughts together yet, again, because I've not finished reading the book, but sometimes I just want to talk about it as I'm going through. I've been thinking about doing it for a while, but somehow with this read, I just felt like it was the right time to just go ahead and start this little, so I'm reading this book series. It's not really a series. The so I'm reading this book, for lack of a better word, series. I don't even know if I need to tell you guys all about this because so many of you already know what it's about, but for those of you who don't, The Lunar Chronicles is a four book series that takes a fairy tale and retells it in each book, combining all of the books into one single story. So the first is Cinder, based off of Cinderella. The second is Scarlet, based off of Red Ri Little Red Riding Hood. The third is called Cress, based off of Rapunzel. Every time I hear the word Cress, I think watercress sandwich, I think hungry. That's every single time that title of that book comes up. And the latest book, Winter, is coming out this month. And it's, what is this? There was an apple. I think it's a Snow White retelling. Cinderella is a cyborg. She lives in New Beijing. People live on the moon. They are called Lunars, hence the Lunar Chronicles. And we're introduced to the prince fairly early on to the story. That's what I'm gonna tell you. You guys pretty much know what it's about. So far, I'm really enjoying this. Now, I wasn't sure how it was going to feel, especially this year I've been coming off of so many great reads, family dramas and that kind of thing. So I wasn't really sure what was gonna happen. I didn't know if I was going to be in for an angsty read. I don't particularly love angsty reads. I'm not really for melodrama, overly sentimental. I'm just, that's just not my style, not what I prefer to read. So I wasn't sure what I was going to get with this. So far this is a really smooth read for me. It's going pretty quickly. Something about it is like a comfortable cozy read. There's a lot going on, but something about it feels very comforting. Although there are all these things happening that are tragic at the same time, the feel, the vibe of the story makes me almost think about one of those Japanimation car uh, cartoons like anime. The characters have a lot of personality. The world is very detailed. I love how it's in New Beijing. I just imagine everyone being Chinese and all the food and just everything. It's very cool. I know I sound surprised, but the series has been so hyped up. I was approaching it very cautiously and so far I'm really loving it. It's a very like get some tea read and next thing you know you're just flying through the pages. It's one of those kinds of reads. There are no wasted scenes. I don't like a book to bore me. With literary fiction, slightly more patience for that. Slightly more. Slightly more. But when I'm reading sci-fi fantasy, if my reader expectations are that I want to go into it and I want to really fall into the world, I don't want to be bored for even two or three pages. I will probably marathon books two and three because I can probably finish this book today and I don't know, maybe I'll just jump right into the next one. There's a lot that's happening, but it isn't angsty, which I appreciate. The prose is really clear. It isn't overly flowery or purple in any way, which I appreciate as well. There is something that happened fairly early on in the book, which makes me feel like, oh, I pretty much guessed, I suppose, what will be the plot twist later, but I'm not sure. That's not always bad if you can guess the plot twist, but it is a surprise when it's not what you think. Like when I read Joe Abercrombie's Half a King. I mean, he does that a lot. There are all these things and you're like, oh, I know how this story is going to go. And it was completely turned on its head. So I don't know if that's going to be the case with this or if it's going to be, if I'm I've pretty much guessed correctly, which is okay because I'm really enjoying the story anyway. There are a few things in here that are kind of like not convenient, but when you're going through a situation and someone is holding you against your will, for instance, they aren't going to let you go very easily. And I felt like that kind of happened a little easily. And then when a family member is ill, you're not going to think about a lot of other things. I know my sister were ill. I, I, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even care about anything. It's like, I would feel like I wouldn't even care about anything going on in my life whatsoever. I know it's a little different with books because obviously the book needs to continue on with the story, but so far I was feeling like there could be a little more time spent dwelling, not angsting. And usually when I'm talking about angsting, I'm talking specifically of romantic 
angsting. That's that's the thing that gets me sometimes. Those are just little things, but there's so much about this book that I'm really enjoying so much. I'm I'm just really happy that I'm finally reading it and I have all three books and that the fourth book is coming out. So hopefully this feeling stays. I just wanted to give you guys a little um, update on what I'm reading at the moment. Yeah. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video. If you liked it, please share the video and talk to me in the comments if you've read this. No spoilers, please. No spoilers. And let me know if you like these little updates where I'm giving you a little quick tidbit on what I'm reading and how I'm feeling about it. So I'll know if you want to see more of these or if you just want to find out during the wrap up. And don't forget to subscribe. Until later, I will see you next time. Bye. I listened to a fascinating nonfiction audiobook this month called The Dorito Effect by Mark Shaxter. Now, the reason why I was attracted to this is be because I love Doritos. I don't eat Doritos at the time. I actually probably only eat, I don't know, like maybe three, no two, three, four, like three bags, big bags of Doritos a year. I don't eat them that much because they're, I mean, I mean, what is it? It's like chemicals with a side of tortilla chip.